So my name's Katina Bill. I am a curator for Kirklees Museums and Galleries. The flag is known as the Freedom Flag and overall it represents a message of freedom, liberty uh, and having a say for, for everybody. It was donated to the museum in 1948 by um, a local historian from Scunthorpe, or rather by his family. Uh, he'd been looking after it for many years and he'd been researching it. So we have a great deal of information about where it came from. It was made in Scunthorpe in 1819 by um, a local man called Mr Bird. We don't seem to have his first <laughs> name, just that he's Mr Bird. And he was a designer um, in the textile industry uh, in Skelmanthorpe and he made it. And um, it was used many times, um, paraded at, uh, at marches, at um, various events and at celebrations as well. Um, but in between being used at these various parades and things, it would actually be hidden away, it would be buried or hidden somewhere in a chest because it was illegal um, because of the, the, the things that it was were campaigning for, that it represented, um, could cause problems with the authorities so nobody wanted to be found, found with it, they were worried that if it was discovered it might be destroyed. Okay, well it, yes it is divided into four segments, a combination of um, messages, slogans and, and illustrations um, which have all been applied in ink. The first one, the top left hand corner, uh, is the name of Skelmanthorpe, um, but obviously where, where it's from and a general message about suffrage, um, asking for, for people to get the vote. Um, and behind that there is an illustration of plants for various flora um, and as far as we can make out there is a leek, a thistle and a rose obviously representing England, Wales and Scotland. Um, oddly we can't actually see a shamrock <laughs> for Ireland however the section underneath that um, the, the lower quarter um, is another reference um, about general sort of liberty that, that, that the country won't, won't really be um, at peace until um, everybody has, has liberty. And that there, there is a reference to um, the cock of England, the pipe of Scotland and the harp of Ireland, but no Welsh reference. This side, the right hand side, is perhaps the more interesting side. Uh, on the top, um, there's a reference to Pauling Balm on the, uh, the wounds of the Manchester sufferers. Now this is a reference to uh, the Peterloo Massacre. It's, it's showing solidarity and sympathy um, with the Peterloo Massacre, which happened in Manchester in 1819. That was where there was a very large crowd gathered um, to listen to speeches about political reform. Um, there was oh, maybe 50,000, 60,000 people. We're talking Wembley Stadium when it's full, yeah. that number of people. The authorities panicked. They sent in the militia who cut into the, the crowd, literally cut into them with sabres. And 15 people were killed and hundreds were injured. Uh, so this is really showing sympathy and solidarity to those people. I think there were quite probably people from Skelmanthorpe had walked over to, because it's only Manchester, it's not, it's what, 25, 30 miles from Skelmanthorpe. Not a huge distance then for people to travel. And there was a great deal of outrage at the way the authorities had, had reacted to what was basically a peaceful crowd, um, just interested in political reform, interested in, in having a say um, in, in how their country was run. Yeah. And then the final, um, the final quarter of the, uh, of the flag um, is um, an illustration of um, a kneeling slave uh, looking up to the all-seeing eye and the slogan, am I not a man and brother? And that is taken almost directly from um, an image that was particularly popular in the, the late ninth, um, 18th century. Um, had been produced by uh, the Wedgwood Pottery um, to, to promote the abolitionist, the anti-slavery movement um, of, of the time. Um, and that, that 
that image um, became very strongly associated with the anti-slavery movement. People who come to the museum respond to the flag really well. It's, it's a really popular item in the collection. Um, it's on the, the, uh, the top ten, the top ten objects um, in the museum. It was selected by the BBC for um, their a History of the World in a Hundred Objects. Um, so it, it does get a lot, of, a lot of interest. And of course it's such a local thing, it's yeah. got such a great local story as well. So yeah, people respond to it very well. Yeah. The flag is of fundamental importance to the region's history and indeed to national history. Yeah. It's one of the most significant items that we have in the collection. Um, it really shows that there was such a strong movement um, of people fighting for, well not fighting for, just campaigning yeah. for um, greater freedom, greater liberties, greater say um, in, in how things were run. Um, looking for um, parliamentary reform, wanting the vote. Um, very much a part of a, a wider tradition in this area of um, radicalism and rebellion. The flag does have a connection with black history. Its overall message of freedom and liberty for all has encompassed an abolitionist image and I think that that's a great example of showing how the people of Skelmanthorpe were looking beyond themselves, looking to how everybody was, everybody's place in the role, uh, in everybody's place in the world and their rightful place, having a, where they've got a say. And it's a very interesting thing that they've included that. Um, it, it's not something that would necessarily be expected to be seen um, in, um, in a suffragist um, campaign. And I think it really shows that the people of Skelman thought, the people who made this, were very much thinking for themselves, not just following um, sort of the cliches or the rope that was being presented to them. Um, but it also, not just thinking for themselves or of themselves, but thinking about the wider community, thinking about everybody, thinking about um, the, the slave trade and the way that people of different nations were being treated. The image that we've got on, on this lower quarter is of a man in chains. He doesn't look particularly black. Um, he's pretty pale skinned, maybe slightly curly haired. Um, but the pose and the slogan that goes with it is taken directly from um, a medallion that was produced by Wedgwood and Co. Um, in, the in the 18th century. It was a very strong abolitionist image. Um, the original actually will have been, I think, a white on dark cameo. So whether that's because that's where they got the image from, I'm not sure. Um, or it's possible that people in the people of Skelman thought haven't ever really seen black people that much. There wouldn't be that many black people around, so they they have to work from from other images, other sources. Um, but so although he doesn't look particularly black, the overall representation with the slogan as well is definitely a reference to to the abolitionist trade to anti-slavery.